morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning at New Town United Methodist Church. So thankful for the many people that have come here this morning, as well as those who watch us on Facebook Live and YouTube. Uh, we are still uh, wearing masks during worship as long as Hamilton and Claremont County are orange, and they seem to still be orange. But aren't you glad to hear that? Anyway. <laughs> They let us know every Thursday, and it looks like Ohio is becoming more and more yellow. So I'm hoping that by uh, by the time of the week or two, especially when we have community again, we'll be back in the yellow zone. But I thank you for uh, continuing with the mask. I hear every day still of people that are down with COVID, and we want to do our part to keep everybody safe. If you had it once, we don't want you to get it again. Uh, I do want to remind everybody that there's attendance pads. If you would sign your name in that pad and pass it down your road, and those will be collected and try to keep track of those things. Also want to mention that the upper rooms for September and October, I, I, uh, Phyllis has been on vacation, but I, just, I thought the upper rooms should be here, and they are, so if you're an upper room reader would like the ones for the next two months, they're here in the sanctuary, and there's also some on the table, and as I leave today, I'll put some at the door. So anyway, September and October upper rooms are here. Also want to announce that the first Tuesday of September, September 6th, the day after Labor Day, I'm going to be starting a new study on Tuesday mornings at 10 o'clock downstairs in the classroom. We're going to be talking about uh, a, a video study called Genesis, A Living Conversation that was hosted by Bill Moyers way back when in the early 90s, but the material is still very good. There's a whole panel of uh, Christians and Jews and, and uh, Muslims and poets and, and all kinds of people talking about the story of Genesis. Uh, so I, I have all the all the stuffs out of print, but I found copies of the uh, resource guide, and everyone that's in the class should have one of these if you're going to plan to be with us in September. These are um, in my office on my on my desk, and you may go ahead and take a copy now. And we'll be studying that again September 6th. It'll be right here using DVD as well as conversation from 10 to around 10 to 11:30 on Tuesday mornings, beginning in September. And I, again, I want to thank you for uh, supporting the little pantry. The stuff goes in and out very quickly, and we appreciate all those who are part of that. And that makes me think about Beth Saw. Beth, Beth Saw was to be our religious today. She texted me this morning, and she's home suffering from vertigo. And, and Jen McComb was so kind to come up and volunteer to uh, step in at the last minute. And she's a very good liturgist, and she knows how to read, so I think we're a good show. <laughs> Are there any other announcements uh, for the life of the church that we need to share at this time? We'll have time for prayer concerns and joys later in the service. Well then, let's begin our worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let, Let us rejoice and be glad in it.
who desires our good. We praise our Creator, who is also our Redeemer. God desires blessing and wholeness for all. We rejoice in God's goodness towards all of us. God's blessing comes as we care for the poor and the needy. With God's help, we will reach out to those in need.
a moment to greet those around you. Scripture, first scripture lesson this morning uh, 
is comes from Psalm 71, and it's a Psalter found on page 794 in your hymnal. I will be reading verses 1 through 6, and we will be singing the response. And her 
head was always bent down. She really couldn't look up. She could maybe find loose change on the pathway, but that wasn't much help for her. And being a woman, I have to believe that she was she was taken in with mercy by perhaps one of her adult children. If she was unable to work, she was unable to uh, to be what a woman was expected to be. And for 18 years, she was separated and unable to come to the synagogue. Well, then she finally musters up uh, the courage to come to church. She says, well, I, I heard that rabbi is pretty good. I want to come and listen to Rabbi Sholem give the, the teaching this morning. And she shows up in church, and wouldn't you know it, it's a pulpit supply. Regular, regular rabbi is not there. But this guy came in from out of town. His name was Jesus. And when she goes, well, I'm already here. I might as well stay and see what he has to say. But as she kind of walks slowly to her seat, Jesus, who was seated to teach, comes out and says to her, Woman, woman, you are free from your ailment. And Jesus says this before he comes up to her. She says, what, 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 What's he talking about? And Jesus comes up to her without any provocation on her part. He lays his hands on her. And she is free from her bondage. She's able to stand up. People in town just caught her in the bed over a woman. They didn't even know her name. She'd been out of circulation for so long. She stands up and she is healed. Best Sabbath ever. Best Sabbath ever. What could go wrong? Well, you know how that goes. Whenever Jesus heals somebody on the Sabbath, somebody complains. And this morning, it's the president of the synagogue. He is incensed that Jesus is doing work on the Sabbath. Because a good view that know that God created the Sabbath as a day of rest, and what you do is prepare your food ahead of time, before Sunday, so that it's ready to go, so you don't have to do preparation for food on the Sabbath day. You let your slaves and your workers have the day off. And unfortunately, this was a threat. this actually continued on into the, the age of slavery, where the slaves just had Sunday jets of one day off, and that's where they worship God. And Jesus surely should have known. But there were six other days to heal. Why did he have to heal on the Sabbath day? Well, I did my homework and I saw that Jesus, there's at least seven reported healings in the Bible that Jesus healed somebody on the Sabbath, and I have to believe that he did it fairly often. And he did it because he called forth the commandment of the, you know, the, the, one of the Ten Commandments, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy, and Jesus said memorably that the Sabbath Sabbath was made for humans, humankind, not humankind for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. It was made for us. And he mentioned, you know, if you'll take care of your ox or your donkey, you'll need them to water on the day of rest to make sure that they receive what they need. How then shouldn't this woman, who has been bound by Satan for 18 years, be free from her bondage? Now the question is, why couldn't Jesus have waited a day? It wasn't a life-threatening thing. It wasn't something that could not have waited. In some ways, the synagogue leader was correct. Well, Jesus healed her because she was there, and he was there, and healing was there. And there was no reason to wait to heal. Now, I would have to tell you, if you've ever gone to the doctor's office or gotten a call from the front desk, excuse me, ma'am, we've had a change in plans. I know you're planning to come to the office today, you're just going to have to wait. We're going to have to schedule it for tomorrow or sometime in the near future. That's frustrating. Because you're ready to be healed or at least ready for something to happen. And that's procrastinating. It's put off. And as we know, as I shared with the children's time, we have a propensity to put off things, sometimes to our detriment. Sometimes we put off things because we say, well, surely this will pass. Surely I can wait. I can wait to uh, have that interview for our job. I can wait to, to apply for college. I can wait to, to help my neighbor. I can wait to volunteer. And as you put things off, nothing happens. Jesus had three years of public ministry. I think one of the things that the Gospels make very clear is that there's an urgency to his ministry. In Mark's Gospel, it comes by very clearly, Mark's a short gospel, and throughout every chapter it says, and immediately, and immediately, and immediately, and right then, again and again, Mark says, Jesus did this, Jesus did that. Jesus wants to use every day for God's 
serve. Now pay attention to Jesus. He does take time to pray. He does take time for himself. He does encourage his disciples to rest in God. He's no stranger to the Sabbath, but he knows, as well as you and I should know, when somebody needs to be healed, and if we have the power within us, now is the time to heal. If you've given a call from a friend or a neighbor to take them to the doctor's office, you take them there. If you receive a call in the middle of the night by somebody who's anxious about their health, you talk with them. Or somebody who's insecure, or somebody who's suits hurting, you're there for them. Now you and I know this as Christians, this is what we are supposed to do, and most of us do it most of the time. But the world is a lonely place, and the world's full of so many people that would get in the way of this happening, including, yes, including Christians. What we find in the synagogue this morning <clears throat> is a religious leader who has an opportunity to, to go along with Jesus, to encourage and to celebrate this healing, and instead he comes up with reasons why it should not have happened. And you see, that's the thing with religious faith. We can take the opportunity to expand our knowledge of the world, to expand our inclusion for the kingdom of God, to for a moment drop the labels and the categories that separate us and begin to recognize diversity and beauty and a whole kaleidoscope of colors, differences that we can celebrate together as children of God. And instead, time and time again, because we're human, people will opt to take the opportunity to put up a wall set up a barrier, to refine the law in such a way that it will exclude people and minimize people and keep them apart. I say this not in judgment of you, but just in judgment of us as religious people, and realize, realizing that in my, in my religious education in my early years, it was very clear to me that there were good guys and bad guys. There was a heaven, there was a hell. There are people included and people excluded. But as Christ takes hold of a person's life, you see, those barriers come falling down. And no more clearly than they do when the gospel goes out to the Gentiles. When, when the Holy Spirit compels Peter and Paul and the disciples that at that time were all Jewish followers of Christ to go out into all the world and tell the world about Christ's love. That is the widest, wonderful, most inclusionary thing that God could do, and God did it. So why don't we, why don't we pick that up and spread it more thoroughly? Because what, what came to my mind uh, years ago about healing, you know, somebody said, well, you know, I'm feeling pretty good, I really don't need healing. Well, well, yeah, but healing, healing is what brings us close to God. I like to think of, I think of sin often, but I think of sin as that which keeps us separate from God and from one another. Sin is something that, that just kind of compels us to, especially in this country, to kind of grow into ourselves, cocoon, uh, buy more things, build our houses with closed off garages and no sidewalks and, and things that will keep us focused on ourselves. That's sin. But God said, I came to the world to love the world, to free the world, and to shine a light in all the dark places, and you can be the ones who shine my light. You can be the light givers. You can be the, the door breakers. You can be the wall demolishers. You can be the one that builds bridges of understanding and hope and encouragement. We look at war as a whole different way in the 21st century. So we can look at the war of Ukraine and see that there is a a people, a nation that's been beshelled and bombed by an autocratic power, and our hearts can go off for them. We also have the understanding that there are people in Russia who are also set upon and put upon and demoralized as well. So we no longer have the capacity to pray for victory in war, but we have the ability to pray for an end in war, and that's of Christ. You see, that's the thing, and all the healing that happens for us is ways in which God brings new and wonderful ways to, to drop those fetters, those chains that bind us so our eyes can open. So when we are discouraged and we just dismayed, God can bring us people who walk alongside of us. When there are people in our communities that without food or shelter or home, we can work to make a difference. When there are children who are not being educated as well as our kids, we can pray and work for better schools. We can pray and work for justice. We can care for this planet, though, this lovely planet that's in such 
turmoil right now with floods and fires and rising waters and melting ice caps. We can sit around and just talk about how terrible things are. We can say, what can we do to make a difference, to respond to this? And you see, that's what God puts in us. God puts us in that spark, the capacity to love and heal in Christ's name. To realize that we need to do it today. The urgency of the scriptures isn't because the world's going to end, but it's because every day matters. Every day counts. And when you get up in the morning and say, Lord, what can I do today to make a difference? God will give you something to do. And when we get together on Sunday morning, I pray that God will fill our hearts. First of all, to let us know that we're loved, to let us live within our limits, to realize that there's not everything that we can do, but there's always something. And most of all, we can pay attention to God and allow God to touch us and move us. Now, what's interesting about this passage, and I'm almost done with the sermon, but what's so interesting about this passage is that after all the kerfuffle with the, with the synagogue leader, here's the final verse. When Jesus had said this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. The enemy was put to shame, and the crowd were rejoicing. But I would say, I want you to take it another, another level higher. I say, rather than exclude, rather than shame, rather than blame, why don't we learn to include, forgive, and heal? Include, forgive, and heal. No blaming, no shame, but healing, forgiving, and healing, and including. For being put to shame is no wonderful thing. But when you know that forgiveness is there, it's less hurtful. When you know that there are people that want to include you, it does make a difference. So this day of Sabbath, today is the day of Sabbath, and I hope that you take the rest that you need, but I also want to remind you that any day of the week can be your Sabbath day. I encourage you to take a day other than Sunday as a day of heart. Perhaps to pray, but also perhaps to enjoy your family, your spouse, your partner. You can celebrate nature, celebrate the culture, listen to music, sing a song, dance, and allow God to touch your heart. Because the more where we are of God's love today, the better tomorrow. I'm going to close with the, the closing chorus and, and the musical Rent. I'm a big fan of Rent, not everybody is, but I love the musical. The closing chorus, I'm not going to sing it, but listen to these words and see if they don't resonate with Je what Jesus is saying to us today. There's only now, there's only here. Give in to love or live in fear. No other path, no other way, no day but today. May today be a day of healing, and tomorrow a day of healing, and every day a day of healing. Because Christ, Christ the great physician, sends us forth to heal and love in his name. Amen. Okay, our hymn of response is in the, uh, the faith we sing. It's healer of our every ill. I do not remember the number. But it's, what? 2213. Two, and we're going to be singing, this is one of these interesting songs. I love the song. It comes out of the uh, Roman Catholic tradition, Marty Hoggin. It has a refrain, a verse, refrain, verse, refrain. We're just going to be singing two verses, but we're going to be singing the refrain several times. So the choir has been practicing this, so hopefully we'll get a, get a hang of it, and just when you begin to figure it out, we'll be over with it. <laughs> That's how I roll. So let's stand and join in healing, join in singing, healing a healer of our career.
prayer, I want to give us a chance to share joys and concerns. I'll begin with my list and give you a chance to add to it. First of all, again, we want to remember Beth Zog and keep her in our prayers. I know suffering from vertigo is a very painful place to be, so we pray for her to regain her equilibrium and receive the healing that she needs. As you know, we often we pray for Nancy Lingo, who uh, watches us faithfully from her home, and today is Nancy's birthday. So happy birthday, Nancy! <laughs> And uh, many more. Uh, prayers for healing continue for Kathy, uh, Kathy Marthas, Marthas, and also for my good friend Debbie Baker. I had the opportunity to talk with her via Zoom. She is living with cancer, and it was great to see her uh, in good spirits and at a time of, of healing. Uh, remission is kind of a, a possibility for her, but it's, it's far away, but she lives each day treatments and with hope. She says, I'm a person of hope and so are we. So we very much celebrate Debbie's life and pray for God to be with her in the days and months to come. Also want to lift up, this is an interesting uh, thing I discovered yesterday. I'm a part of a Zoom group that we talk about films and we had a chance to watch a documentary from way back from 1982 about a 1979 political campaign in Muncie, Indiana. For mayor, and one of the candidates was Alan Wilson. He has long been retired, but he actually was with us, and we talked about his mayoral race and that film. But in our conversation, we discovered that Alan Wilson was one of those, those people that was hit by the first wave of COVID, and he was put on a ventilator in an induced coma for quite some time. And he said he learned later that some people were not sure that he was going to survive. He has since this past year. Uh, out in COVID a second time, but he is home recovering from that. And he has had, again, he had good energy and good spirits, but I want to lift up Alan Wilson, this uh, new friend of mine, this person I just met for the first time yesterday. But we pray for healing to his throat, and uh, we thank you already, Lord, for healing to his spirit. Also, I want to continue to pray for victims of floods and fires. Every day, there are more uh, environmental catastrophes. So we pray for people who are moved from their homes. We also pray for immigrants and, and exiles from Ukraine and other countries. We pray for us to be just ready to help wherever we can. That's my rather lengthy list. Now, would anyone else care to share names or joys or concerns? We'll have them to our list today. Yes. Um, continue prayers for Jenny Wallen. She's got COVID rebound. Okay, keep Jenny Wallen in your prayers as she uh, rebounds again and again as deals with COVID in a very, very uh, vulnerable health situation. We, we continue to keep Jenny in our prayers. Are there other prayer concerns? Well, the last prayer remember these as well as others on our hearts and minds. Dear Lord, our God, we thank you so much for your healing presence. We thank you that you have the audacity to live among us and show us the love of God. To show us the cost of love, to be sure, but also to show us the benefit and blessings of love and healing. You are not ashamed to heal on the Sabbath. You were able to take the criticism of your adversaries to heart so much that when you went to the cross, you died for them, as well as for those who love you. That we might know that you always take the initiative to love us, and we praise you and thank you for that. We pray for our families and all the children and teachers of all ages back in school this fall. We pray for a day filled with learning and opportunities and joy. We thank you that there's so much to learn. We pray that we might be life learners and grow not only in our knowledge of information, but in our experience and knowledge of your love. We pray for everyone today who's dealing with the needs for healing, those who are anticipating doctors' visits and lab reports. Those who are dealing with broken marriages and damaged families, we pray for you to be with them and surround them with the love that they need. We lift up Jenny Wall, we lift up Beth Sog and Nancy Lingo, Kathy Marthas, Debbie Baker, Alan Wilson, and all the other people in our hearts and minds. We pray for the country of Ukraine, we pray for the people of that country, we pray for people that are, that are hit by war and oppression throughout the world, including our 
Help us to find good news every day. Help us not to wallow in the pain of the world, but to come seeking opportunities to grow in love. And Lord, we present ourselves to you. We are broken, we are incomplete, but Lord, we thank you for the love we feel here. We thank you for the opportunity to worship together, to sing together, to pray together, and to know that we are one in Christ and you call us to celebrate your kingdom to everyone in the world. So for that, we dedicate our lives, we dedicate these churches, we dedicate our faith to you. You are the giver of the greatest gift of all. So thank you, Lord Jesus, for coming into our life, touching us, and caring for us and the world. In your name we pray. Amen. Let's pray now the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And as we've been getting into the habit here of leaving the, our offerings in the offering, offering plates here, I also want to remind everyone that the gift of God's love is free. Do not feel obligated to give out of, out, of, out of that kind of pressure, but realize that those of us who love Christ will give to the church for the sake of the world. There is no, nothing we can do to earn God's love, but there's much that we can do to respond to God's love, and that is what we do. We also respond by hearing an offertory anthem, and this morning is when the, the choir is going to present There is a Wildness in God's Mercy will come up. At this time, we'll be accompanied also by handbills.
into our day-to-day -day lives, hoping those gifts meet the expectations of our discipleship. You have called us more, to speak for you, to make our testimony part of our offering, which terrifies us. Then scripture reminds us that you will provide us with the words. Give us the faith and courage to speak of your love, mercy, and compassion. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.